Crossover fighters are nothing new in gaming, with titles like Marvel vs. Capcom, Mortal Kombat vs. DC, and Super Smash Bros. still asking the old question of which fictional character would win in a fight, although we do have a few internet shows for that really. But at EVO 2017, Arc System Works, the creators of Guilty Gear, Dragon Ball Fighters, and Blaze Blue, announced that they'll be bringing characters from Atlas's Persona 4 Arena, French Bread's Undernight Inber, and Rooster Teeth's Ruby, against their own characters from Blaze Blue. Now, a year later, Arc is ready to begin the war between these franchises. But will the offerings be enough to not only bring in hardcore fighting game fans, but also Ruby fans, like me, as well? Welcome to the HUD everyone, I'm Zaccaroni, and today I'll be your waiter who will be going through some of the features the game has to offer. So without further ado, please be seated, and here are the toppings on Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. All the heroes and villains of the four franchises that I mentioned at the intro have all been transported to a new world for a tournament that required two fighters to work together to achieve the ultimate prize. But unlike traditional tournament rules, contestants will have to look after an artifact called a keystone and take it to the far end of the valley to be the champion to win a prize of their choice, while looking out for other fighters who want to take it off the holder's hand. However, there are only four keystones in total, and there are obviously more than four characters in this tournament, so they are given to four of the main characters of the four universes they came from. Ragnar the Blood Edge of Blaze Blue, Yu Narikami of Persona 4, Hyde Kido of Undernight Inbirth, and Ruby Rose of, well, Ruby, with a W, between the R and B. Not her name the title of the show she's in, okay? Anyway, they have been chosen to guard their own keystone, so that means they are the targets for every fighters they will come across, and as they head to the main goal, they will soon discover who brought them here, and why. But seriously, we're just here to see well-known characters beat the cheese out of each other, so here's what it has to offer. Episode mode is the game's story mode, where you play through the main characters of the four franchises that are featured in the game, and you are presented with a series of fights with a random character backing you up, ultimately ending with a final boss battle. Just make sure you save your progress, because there is no autosave and you can't continue on the next chapter when you switch to a new episode. Survivor mode is where you face rounds of color swap fighters, and whatever damage you take, carried on in the next round, but with a little extra health boost for your victory. And Versed mode is the place to face against the AI or settle friendly rivalries in local one-on-one -on -one matches. Tactic mode is where you learn the fundamentals of cross-tag battle, character moveset and combos, and missions where you are given objectives for what you have learned so far. Once you feel like you learned the ins and outs, you can practice and plan your movesets and strategy against a CPU dummy in training mode. But if you really feel like you want to face up against some fresh meat opponents, then you can find them in the online lobby. Here, you can enter or create your own lobby that holds up to 64 players, and then you are presented with the lobby room that you can roam freely as your cheapy avatar. Then you are presented with cabinets that you use to start a fight, but then you have to wait for another opponent to enter so you can begin the fight. If you got a good internet connection, of course. But if you want to change characters, you have to do it in the lobby menu. Plus, you can select the stage and battle music you like, and they will remain like that every time you go start a fight. Finally, you can save your online matches in the replay theater menu, and you can compare your rankings in the rankings menu. Whatever you do in this game, you earn currency to spend on customized accessories, like icons, title plates and frames, color swaps, and adorable chibi avatars. I mean, who don't want these little guides? Unlike Ark's last game, where they were powered by Unreal Engine, they have gone back to basic with hand-drawn sprites that were taken out of their respected games but still features 3D-like environments. 
And this is the first time we see the Ruby cast that presents itself in 2D. Wish I can see the developer can make their own Ruby game. Before a match begins, characters do short introductions before the fight starts, which can be skipped. But if you pair up two characters who are connected to one another, they'll do special introductions like Yuri and Yosuke will high-five each other, while Ruby will admire Ragnar's weaponry. And during cutscenes in episode mode, you are just shown characters in their battle poses with a change of facial expressions and emotion symbols next to their heads. The roster featured 10 characters from Blaze Blue, 4 characters from Persona 4 and Under Night Inbirth, and 2 characters from Ruby, giving a total of 20 characters in the game, not including DLC. For the cast for Blaze Blue characters, it featured the returning English actors from Chrono Phantasma. However, S is the only one who hadn't been voiced English before because of the Japanese dub only, Central Fiction. The English cast for Persona 4 and Ruby also replies their roles for their individual characters. However, the cast for Under Night Inbirth had never been voiced English before. The actors they have selected are Kyle McCarley as Hyge, Sarah Ann Williams as Lynn, Ian Sinclair as Gordell, and Keith Silverstein as Wallstein. The soundtrack not only features new music, but also remixes of original tracks from the four franchises. As for options, you can alter the upper and lower HUDs, as well as the volumes for Master, BGM, Voices, System Voices, Sound Effects, and BG Sound Effects from 0 to 100 and change the text and voice language from English to Japanese, but you can also customize each character's voices. But for PC players, they can set the display to full screen or windows mode that goes from 1280 to 1920, set anti-alias of full screen and windows from 2x to 4x, or just turn it off entirely, display the frame rate on the top left corner, and activate V-Sync mode. The rules are very similar to other two-man team fighters. You and your opponent choose two characters to play as, ranging from the weak but quick to the slow but powerful, and the goal is to be the only player with at least one fighter to win the whole match. But if time runs out, then the victor is decided by who still has two characters left in the match, or who has the most health left. If you are playing with the AI, even in single or versus mode, then you can alter the difficulty from beginner to hell, and the time limit can be set from 60 to 300 seconds or infinite. On to the controls now. Characters can do a light and heavy attack, but pressing one of them repeatedly allowed you to do a 4 hit smart combo, which is good for people who can perform complicated combos. The class assault is tied to one button, and pressing it allows you to do a quick devastating combo effect and pressing the button at the right time allows you to boost your final hit, double if your partner is still in. But you can only use this while you are standing up and on the ground. But if you use this while crouching, you can do a leg sweep that knocks your opponent down, and if you use this while in the air, you do a quick jump clash attack from above. Reverse actions allowed you to perform a reverse attack that avoids incoming attacks just by pressing two buttons at the same time. Throwing is also done by pressing two buttons at the same time, but to prevent your opponent from throwing you, press the two same buttons again at the right moment to do a throw escape. Special moves are done by doing a quarter circle and a button press. Some are used to fire projectiles, while others require you to be up close to your opponent. And pressing two buttons when doing a quarter circle allows you to do a devastating ultra move known as a destroying skill. But if you don't know what a quarter circle is, here you go. But it will consume two bars of your skill gauge, which is presented at the bottom of the screen. And to refill it, you have to land successful hits on your opponent in order to build it up again. Finally, if your opponent is still pulverizing you while blocking, you can do a reject guard that will blow him or her away from you by pressing two buttons at the same time while blocking. 
but it will consume one bar of your skill gauge as well. Your second character plays a vital role in battle. Not only you can switch characters out if their health is low, but you can also command attacks from them. But you must keep an eye on the cross gauge on the bottom next to the skill gauge, for commands consumed 50% of it and it refills for a few seconds. You can also bring your partner out to do a cross combo, where you need at least 50% of the cross gauge. Once activated, your partner will not leave the screen and will do a chain of attacks while you are doing attacks as well, until the cross gauge is depleted. But if one of your characters is down, then the cross gauge will be replaced with the resonant blaze, where your chip damage will increase, slowly recovered lost health, skill gauge automatically fills, and can perform flashy one-hit finishers called asteroids. But you only have 15 seconds to use it, and you can make it powerful by using more of your partner's skills and cross combos. You know this by the sideward squares presented next to the cross gauge. The more it fills up, the more powerful it will be. So use it wisely, friends, if you want to get the comeback on your opponent. On Steam, it will cost you £32.99, while the PS4 and Switch, both retail and digitally, will cost you £34.99. As for DLC, there are three additional colour swap sets that cost £2.49 each on PS4 and Switch, but £2.09 on Steam. While the roster in the main game is limited to 20, there are three character packs that contain three characters, each costing £3.69 on PS4 and Switch, but £3.99 on Steam, with the exception of Blake and Yang, the two remaining members of Ruby that you can download for free. Arc System promised that there will be more DLC characters on the way, but if anyone wants all the characters, then they can get the Character All-in-One Pack Season Pass, costing £13.99 on PS4 and Switch, but £15.49 on Steam. And then there's the Digital Deluxe Edition that comes with the Season Pass that will cost you £49.99 on PS4 and £48.49 on Steam. Sorry Switch users, I couldn't find any details for your version. For achievements, there are 42 of them on Steam, and 43 on PS4 that contain a Platinum. And as for storage, it will take 20GB on Steam, while 6GB on PS4 and Switch, both retail and digitally. Well, that's some of the features I can tell you right now, but if there are some that I have missed out, let me know in the comments and I hope this will give you an idea of what you'll be getting for your money. Check back with me after the end of the month and I'll tell you what I think of Blaze Blue, Cross Tag Battle and all the other games I've been playing. And if you like what you see, be sure to like, share and subscribe to my channel. But until then, I'm Zaccaroni. Enjoy your pizza and I'll see you next time.